Okay, so welcome back. Uh, today, we're going to be taking a look at our match three game. We're going to make it so that when we click on the booster and then click on a piece, it's going to turn it into a color bomb, just like we'd expect. So stick around and let's dive right in. Okay, so welcome back. So where we left off here was we have our board and then none of our bonus pieces, our uh, booster pieces are showing. So today we're gonna make one of the booster pieces show and we're gonna make it work the way it should. We're gonna start with doing the color bomb. So let's uh, jump right in here. First thing I wanna do is I wanna go to my bottom UI scene. And this is what's dictating which of these three are gonna show up. So I'm gonna make a few changes here just to make my life easier. And we're going to be doing this a little bit better later on. But for now, I just want to get it up and running so that I can test to make sure the booster buttons are going to work. So I'm going to go to my HBox container. And before I activate booster buttons, I'm going to set that booster info so that one of them registers as being a booster. So in my ready function here, before I activate the buttons, I'm going to say booster info dot booster info and I'm going to grab element one I'm going to set that equal to color bomb now in this activate booster function here I can give it a process delta in this activate booster function I'm checking to see if there's no booster info and that's false and I'm going to add another like an else statement here I'm going to say else uh, what I want to do is get child i dot check active, and I'm going to set that to be true. So if there is something stored as what should be the booster, we should have one of those pieces turn active. So I'm going to save this, and let's try running just this scene really quickly. We should see one of the booster buttons turn active. Hmm. Why did we not see that? We've got our HBox container here. Booster info i is equal to null. So let's take a look here really quickly. Let's make sure this booster is in the right group. Yep. Um. If is active, oh, I didn't assign an active texture to this, did I? Yeah, it doesn't know what its active texture should be. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the way that we have this set up. So instead of having this active texture as an export, I'm just going to have the active texture reference. And then I'm going to make some references to the different textures we could have and I'm gonna make those exports. So we're gonna do export of type texture var, we'll call this color bomb texture. We'll do another one and we'll make this add counter texture. Do another one and we'll call this destroy piece texture. Now you can have as many of these textures as you want for however many of the different kinds of boosters you're planning on having. So you can just kind of go nuts with this if you want to. Um, for me, I'm just going to be doing these three. And then here, if it's active, I'm going to do a little check here, which means I'm going to need to pass in some more information. So right now, the HBox container is passing to this check active function. It's telling it if it should be active or not. I want it to tell it if it should be active and then also tell it what it should be active as. So if it, if is active is true, I'm going to add another one here, which I'm going to call type. So I'm going to say if type is equal to color bomb, then I'm going to say the normal texture is equal to color bomb texture. 
And I can add a couple else if statements here too to cover the other options. So elif type is equal to counter bomb texture normal is equal to counter bomb texture. That's what I just called it, right? I know I just made it add counter texture. Okay. And then we'll do one more. Type is equal to, yeah, destroy piece. And then this is B. Texture normal is equal to destroy piece texture. All right, cool. Now, all three of these are using the same script, but they're three separate objects. So I'm going to highlight all three of them by highlighting booster one, holding down shift and highlighting booster three. And then I'm going to go here to my art folder, UI. And I'm going to set all three of them to have the same color bond texture, the same destroy piece texture, and the same add counter texture. So. Now, once I save this, I'll get an error if I just hit play because now the HBox container has to tell it what to do. So we're going to say false. And then I also want to send it the, the type from the booster info. So booster info dot booster info I. Yeah, that's all I need to do is just that. And then if we're, oh, hey, wrong one. So I'm going to grab this, let's copy. Actually, let's cut that and let's paste it here, the true one. And then for the false one, I'm just going to give it null, meaning no value for that. So I'm going to save this and let's play this individual scene. And we should see one of them turn on. There we go. All right, so one second, I'll be right back. All right, so now I have it knowing what kind of booster it should be. And I'm artificially doing this. Ideally, you would be setting this from the level select screen, and we'll be covering that later on. That's a better way to do it rather than just directly setting it here. What I wanna do next is I wanna look at the booster script and I wanna make this act the way I want it to. So right now we've got active, Let's see, get rid of this process delta. So the way I want this to work, and let's look at the game window here so I can kind of show you, is I want it to be so that if a player presses a booster button, they then have to do something else to actually use it. So like if it's a color bomb, they have to press the color bomb and then touch a piece. If they touch the color bomb button again, we'll deactivate it. Uh, same thing for the destroy piece and for the counter, same thing, just anywhere on the board. And then they can press this to uh, deactivate it again so that that way if your finger slips here, you're not wasting something that might have some value. So I want to know when I press this and then I wanna be able to tell the grid that we're using a booster. And since the grid knows we're using a booster, it shouldn't allow any normal input, which means we should only allow this to be pressed when everything is settled. So to do that, these texture buttons already have, and we've used this before, they have a signal for when they're pressed. So what we can do is we can go to their signals and we can emit a pressed type, but I want to know, yeah, I want to know which button is emitting that pressed signal. So I'm going to have to I'll make a new signal for each of them and I'm going to call this signal press booster and then for each of these I'm going to have to do this individually I guess I'm going to grab the uh, pressed signal and connect it to itself and I'll do the same thing actually I think I only need to do it uh, that's a bad way to do it. Let's not do that. 
Uh, let's go back here and let's disconnect that signal. Let's instead just use the uh, button pressed feature. So hold on for one second here. Okay, so what I want to do here now is take the booster and I want to go to the node. And what I had just done was created this pressed booster signal, but I actually don't want that. There's n the best way to just send a press button signal from the button to the container that holds it, or even to the UI itself, would be just to use that innate pressed sin signal. So I'm going to use pressed, I'm going to connect it to the bottom UI. And then when this is pressed, I want to pass on the information of which booster it is to the game board. So I'm going to create a new signal. I'm going to call this booster pressed. And then when booster button one is pressed, I'm going to emit signal booster pressed, and I'm going to pass in which, um, so if it's button one, I'm going to pass in the booster info dot booster info one, because it's that button. And then I'll do something similar with the other two buttons here. So booster two, I'm going to connect with the bottom UI in the same way. And same for booster three. So then I'm just going to grab this line here, copy and paste and paste. And then this is going to be for two and three. So, all right, that's going to tell the board, or we're going to use that signal to tell the board which booster was pressed. So if we go back to our game window here, I want to look at my bottom UI right here. And I want to connect that booster press signal with the grid. So now the grid knows when the booster button's been pressed. All right, so now what I need to do here is I need to create a new game state for when the booster is pressed to make sure that I can't use the board. So I'm going to add that to, in my grid script, I'm going to add that to my enums at the beginning. So this new state is going to be called booster. When you're dealing with enums, it's important to be careful about in which order you put them. So it might make more sense, depending on how you're thinking, to do wait, move, and then put booster between move and win. But I don't know if GD script does this, but some languages when you're using enums will have them kind of indexed in memory so that once you have something in this first spot here, it needs to be that one thing in this first spot. But I'm not certain if that's native for GD script or not. So I'm just going to add it to the end just to be safe. So when we press the booster button, I'm also going to need a couple of variables. Actually, no, I don't because I can just read the state. So down here, booster button pressed. So what I want to do is I want to say if state equals move, then state equals booster. Else if state equals booster, then state equals move. So we can only use the booster if we're in the move state. And if we're already in the move state, then we're going to change ourselves to the, um, yeah, we can only use it in the move state. We're going to change it to booster. And if we're already in the booster state, we're going to change it to move. So I'm going to save that. We're going to go out of here. And I want to test this out really quickly. So let's try this out here. Okay. So if I move those pieces, everything's going to settle. And then if I press the booster button, that did not work like I wanted it to. So did I not hook up the signal correctly? Oh, am I not emitting the signal though? So if I go back in here, yeah, emit signal booster pressed. Huh. So then in my grid, uh, if state is move, state is booster, 
status booster, status move. Mm, let's try that one more time just to see. I just want to, I'm going to add a print statement. Actually, let's just even just print this state. And let's do the same thing here. All right, so let's run this. Debugger here, we've got an error. Do I need to have this take in that argument? So I'm just going to call this booster type because when we're sending it from the bottom UI, we're sending it with an argument inside of it. So maybe that's the issue. Let's save this. Let's try again. Okay, cool. If you'll notice when I press the booster, like I was saying, enums remember where they are. It knew it was in state three, so zero, one, two, three. So it was in the booster state. All right, cool. So I can get rid of these print states. Now, uh, what I want to do here is I want to, since I'm using that um, uh, that button that's going to turn any piece into a uh, color bond, I'm going to essentially do that. So state is booster. If it's booster, then we're going to move. But if it's booster, I want to also read what the type is. So if booster type is equal to color bomb, then I'm going to make a new method here to create a color bomb. So I'm going to put this up here. Uh, I'm going to create this function. We'll call this make color bomb. Actually, no. So this can just control the state, and we'll get rid of that. And then instead, we already have this touch input here. And that's coming from process. So right now, if our state is moved, then we're going to do touch input. I'm going to add an else if state is booster, we'll do booster input. Um, and let's save the booster type to a local variable here. So might as well put it here. So we'll call this booster stuff. And this is going to be our booster booster type. So then I want to set, oh, I don't want to call it, I'll just call this booster. And then uh, that doesn't make any sense either. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it type. And then so we'll move the state to booster and booster type is equal to type. Now, just to make sure this is going to store it correctly, I'm going to have it print out the booster type. So when I press the button, I should see the string of the type, which should be color bond. So. Awesome. So, oh, I didn't actually make the booster input. I'm going to put the booster input down here with all the other booster stuff. So I'm just going to call this function booster input. For now, it's just going to be a pass. And then I'm going to play this again. Cool. So it knew what kind of bomb that was. That's good. Now, when we're calling booster input, um, we're going to decide what so we need to check to see if the user is clicking on the board so if if input dot is action just pressed UI touch um, 
then what I want to do is if is in grid, and I want to check to make sure that the mouse position input dot is it to get global mouse position. Or is it I'm just gonna have to look. <laughs> I have it up here in my um, touch control or touch input. Oh, it's not input, it's just get global mouse position. So we'll do if is in grid. Get global mouse position dot x. Oh, but before I do this, I have to change it from pixel to grid. So we'll do we'll call this var temp is equal to pixel to grid get global mouse position dot x get global mouse position dot y. So there we go. And then if is in grid, so does grid take, yeah, it just takes a grid position. If is in grid temp, then I wanna make sure that all pieces exist. If all pieces temp.x, temp.y is not equal to null, then I'm gonna do all pieces temp.x, temp.y, and we already have a function in here um, in the pieces to make them color bombs, and it's just make color bomb. And then I can just take this away. So let's try this out. If I hit play, It's just way too loud for me. I know I have it turned down for you guys, but just holy cow, that is too loud. Um, let's go to my music files. I'm just gonna grab all of these. Oh, I have to edit them one at a time. Ugh, that's no good. I don't wanna do the loop offset. I just, I just want it quieter. That's all, I just want it quieter. Um, music player. Ugh. All right. Can I, can I just, hmm, did I make, see, I, it's been forever since I've used this. So sorry that it's been so long from coming back. And I'm sure this isn't super interesting for you guys to watch me mess around with trying to remember what I did. Um, sound manager. There we go. Music player. Let's make this like negative 35. And let's try that now. So save, game window, play. It's still so loud. Uh, maybe it's just me. Like negative 80. Um, music is, or not music, decibels are on a logarithmic scale. So negative 80 is more than like it. Good Lord. All right, anyway, I've, I've spent too much time on this. So I'm gonna hit, hit play here. And if I touch that button, there, it turns it into a color bomb. Now the one thing I need to do is reset the game state after I do the color bomb back to move, so state equals move. So if I go back in here, So there we go, we've got our color bomb working. Now, next time we're gonna take a look at the uh, 
we'll call it a counter bomb where you add uh, values to the counter. And then after that, we'll look at the destroy individual pieces and we'll talk about how you can take this logic and extend it on your own. Uh, we're kind of building a, a relatively flexible system here, so it shouldn't be too bad to take it and extend it on your own. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments down below. Otherwise, you can follow me on Discord where there's a ton of really cool people who are totally willing to answer questions if I'm not there. Uh, you can join or you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos. I have a Patreon that you can join. As little as a dollar a month it helps me keep making videos like this. And yeah, I hope everybody out there has themselves a wonderful day.